The Echo is a fully calibrated speech source specifically designed for speech intelligibility measurements with Dirac. Four Penlight batteries will power the Echo for up to eight hours. And the Echo can be mounted on common tripods. The power button is used to turn the Echo on or off. There are three different signals built in. The first is a male voice. This is a speech intelligibility test voice that is meant to be used for setting the acoustical... Then there are two MLS stimuli, a continuous MLS signal and an intermittent stimulus, which is a regular MLS followed by a period of silence for background noise measurements. The MLS signals can also be played at a higher level. The output connector is used to feed the signals directly into a PA system, while the input connector is used to play your own signals. The Echo comes with software that needs to be installed on your measurement PC to let Dirac know about the Echo. First, run the Echo setup program. Then start Dirac. The Echo measurement preset is now available in the measurement window. To measure using the Echo, simply select the Echo preset. However, before you can do a measurement, you need to perform a level calibration. To do so, insert the microphone into the calibrator and start the calibration on the Gain tab. Enter the calibrator gain here and use the default name for the new level calibration. Dirac is then ready to perform an echo measurement. Normally, the echo is started with an intermittent stimulus at the standard output level. In Dirac, because the echo preset is already selected, all you have to do is press the start button. In channel 1, you can see the impulse response, and in channel 2, the background noise. This impulse response fits well within the window, but if the impulse response were too long, for example more than 5 seconds, then we would need to use the continuous signal instead. The impulse to noise ratio is also good enough. If the ratio is too low, say lower than 20 decibels, you can improve it using a pre-averaging for an intermittent stimulus. If that doesn't help, or if you cannot use an intermittent stimulus because the impulse response is too long, you must use the raised echo level. With the impulse response looking fine, you can look at the speech intelligibility parameters and see whether the STI is good. If the STI is below expectation, you can use the MTF graph to find whether this was caused by noise or by the acoustics of the room. Now suppose you want to see how the STI would differ if there was background noise from road traffic. For this, open the File Properties window to set the noise levels manually on the Speech tab. You can also use a previously measured traffic noise background. When you click OK, the STI is recalculated. Now, you can see that the STI is fair with these noise levels. In the same fashion, you can check what a raised voice level would do to the STI. As you have seen, it is really easy to perform measurements in full compliance with IEC 60268 Part 16 using the Echo and Dirac.